Hello students, uh, I am Dr. Dipti Kulkarni. I am assistant professor at Kaitis College of Engineering, Kolhapur. We are discussing optics and modern physics course and in that course we are discussing our unit number 1 that is interference, diffraction and polarization. We have seen the interference part. In interference we have discussed interference due to uniform thickness thin film and base shaped thin film. In this lesson we will discuss the theory of diffraction grating. So basically uh, in the objectives of this first unit is uh, we will study the uh, phenomena of light like interference, diffraction, polarization, uh, we will derive the equations for bright and dark fringes uh, due to interference of light through thin films. We will discuss diffraction grating theory and its applications and we will see the concept of double diffraction, optical activity and their engineering applications. In this lesson, we will uh, see the concept of diffraction grating and we will derive equation for bright fringe using diffraction grating. So, uh, this uh, very beautiful picture of sunrise depicts this diffraction phenomenon. You can see here, uh, here uh, you can see the edges of this shadow of stem they are not clear. So, why this happen because the light is entered into the geometrical shadow right. So, why this light enters because the bending takes place at the edges of this uh, uh, obstacle that is same and this light spreads into the geometrical shadow. So, this beautiful picture of sunrise depicts diffraction phenomenon. Uh, right. So, basically what is diffraction? Diffraction is bending of light around the sharp corners of obstacle. When uh, the obstacle is placed in the path uh, of light and uh, the this bent or diffracted light it spreads into the geometrical shadow. So, this is uh, our obstacle right light incident on this obstacle we expect shadow region in this area but then light bends around the corners when this obstacle is very very small then this diffracted rays they get interfere with each other and we can see this fringe like pattern. And this diffraction can be uh, explained by using this equation that is x is equal to lambda into capital D by small d where x is the fringe width of these diffraction fringes. Uh, lambda it is wavelength of incident light, capital D it is distance between source and screen and small d it is the size of obstacle. Uh, similarly as we get a diffraction through obstacle uh, if we put a slit, so this slit also has this one obstacle, another obstacle and there is an opening, right. So, when a plane wave front is incident on this slit, uh, we know what happens in the opening, through the opening of the slit, most of the rays propagate along same direction of incidence, whereas some rays they get diffracted like this. So, these rays they get diffracted by the smallest angle, so they will form the first order fringe. Then some of the rays they will get diffracted by slightly greater angle, they will form second order fringe. Then some rays they might also get diffracted by the still higher angle and they will form this third order bright fringe. Uh, so, here you can see at center you can, this cent you can get this central maximum, then there are first order maximum, second order maximum, third order maximum and so on. So, here this type of diffraction, it can be the single slit diffraction, uh, it can be uh, given by the equation d sin theta is equal to n lambda condition for dark. So, this d in this equation it is nothing but the slit width, theta it is angle of diffraction n order of diffraction lambda wavelength of incident light. So, using uh, these two pictures they depicts these two diagrams they depicts the uh, two types of diffraction. So, this first diagram it uh, depicts Fresnel's type of diffraction and second diagram it depicts Fraunhofer's type of diffraction. So, basically in Fresnel's diffraction we do not use lens system and hence the distance between source and screen it is finite. In front of us diffraction we use lenses, we require lenses to make the plane wave front, we require lenses to focus the rays and hence we say that the distance between source and screen uh, is effectively infinite. So, this type of diffraction it is front of us diffraction and you have studied this diffraction types in uh, your uh, HSC. So, uh, here is a question for you. If we change the slit width, what is the effect of change in slit width to the diffraction pattern? Suppose if we increase the slit width, what happened to this diffraction pattern? Will it get expanded? Will it get compressed or there will be no change 
on this diffraction pattern. You may pause the video, think of it and you can give your answer. So, I hope uh, you have got your answer. If we change this little width, uh, then uh, this theta that is angle of diffraction changes. Slit width, it is, it is given by small d. So, uh, if we uh, see this equation, this d and theta, they are directly, they are inversely proportional to each other. So, if we increase the slit width, theta decreases. If theta decreases, the pattern get compressed. If we decrease the slit width, theta increases and the pattern get expanded. So, uh, this uh, change in slit width affect theta and hence it affects the diffraction pattern. Uh, so, if single slit diffraction is possible, can double slit diffraction possible? Yes. So, here also even if there is single slit or uh, double slit, whatever light incident on this slit when they come across any obstacle, so when they come across this edge of slit, they will show diffraction. Uh, most of these of course, they propagate along the same direction of incidence, those rays they are called as a direct rays uh, and the rays that incident at the edges, they get diffracted like this. Now, if double slit diffraction is possible, can this multiple slit diffraction possible? I, uh, I, I think you have got your answer, yes. Uh, so, here when this plane wavefront is incident on this multiple slit arrangement because diffraction is the fundamental property of light, uh, we know that uh, where, uh, even if a single slit is there or multiple slits are there, light will not leave its fundamental property, this light is going to get diffracted at the edges of slit. So, most of the rays of course, they will get uh, they will uh, go along the same direction, but the rays that incident at the edges of the slit, they will get diffracted and we know that we get diffracted rays on both sides of this direction of incidence, uh, right. So, these multiple slits, they gives us this multiple parallel diffracted rays. We require a lens to focus these rays and we can get diffraction pattern. So, this multiple slit arrangement is called as diffraction grating. So, large number of uh, arrangement of large number of parallel equidistant slits is known as diffraction grating. Large number means about 12,000 to 30,000 slits in 1 inch. First diffraction grating was made by Joseph Fraunhofer by using fine copper wires. So, he arranged some 310 copper wires uh, which are parallel and equidistant to each other and using that arrangement he could record solar spectrum. So, that was first diffraction grating. Nowadays, we made diffraction grating uh, with the help of a very fine tip diamond uh, pointer. So, this diamond uh, it has to be attached to this precision machine, the diamond pointer, it has to be attached to the precision machine and uh, this precision machine is again attached to the computer. So, it is an automized precision machine. So, this grating is prepared by ruling fine lines uh, which are extremely close together which is having equal width because these slits are parallel and equidistant. equidistant. So, uh, they are extremely close and of equal width and this lines can be scratched or ruled on diffraction grating on a glass slab. So, that forms a diffraction grating. Now, we know that when scratches are made on glass, they act as a opaque uh, to the light or opaque uh, line to the light. Uh, when uh, these scratches are made on glass slab, these scratch lines, they act as opaque lines and uh, the distance or separation between the lines, they act as a slit because it is nothing but glass. So, this opaque uh, lines uh, are there and they are separated by transparent portion which act as a slit. So, this type of diffraction grating, it is called as a transmission type of diffraction grating. There is another type, uh, reflection type of diffraction gratings uh, are also there, but we, we will discuss only transmission type of diffraction grating. So, this picture uh, you can see here, it is nothing but diffraction grating. Of course, the lines are not that close. It is just a diagram for this diffraction grating. So, uh, let us see now the theory of diffraction grating. In this, we will uh, derive equation for bright fringes with the help of this diffraction grating. So, uh, as I told you, there is alternate opaque line slit, opaque line slit, opaque line slit is there on this diffraction grating. So, this is the cross-sectional view 
of this diffraction grating. So, this yellow lines they indicates opaque line the separation between them it act uh, it is nothing but slit. So, x y is the plane of diffraction grating or cross sectional view of this diffraction grating. The opaque uh, opaque regions are a b a dash b dash a double dash b double dash and so on. When a plane wavefront is incident on this diffraction grating as we know most of the rays propagate along same direction the rays are called as direct rays. These direct rays can be focused by the lens and they will form this central maximum. I have just shown direction where we get this central maximum. I have not shown all the direct rays in this diagram. The rays that incident at the edges they shows diffraction like this. All these diffracted rays they have same angle of diffraction that is theta and hence all these diffracted rays they are parallel to each other. Again to focus these parallel diffracted rays we require a lens and this lens focus these rays at this point and we get diffraction uh, fringe along this side as well as diffraction also takes place on this side. It is not shown in the diagram uh, but uh, on this side also diffraction takes place and here also we get this. Uh, diffraction fringe. Uh, so, here the angle of diffraction as I told it is theta right. So, uh, consider this diffraction grating has capital N number of slits on this diffraction grating uh, x y as I told you it is the section of diffraction grating or cross sectional uh, plane of diffraction grating. Uh, now, here the distance between two slits distance between two slits consider this slit and this slit. So, distance between these two slits is it equal to width of opaque region and the slit. So, here width of opaque region is suppose small a, width of slit is suppose small b, then distance between this slit and this slit it is equal to a plus b, right. So, a plus b it is distance between two slits, this distance is constant because slits are parallel and equidistant. So, this distance is constant and this distance it is called as a grating element or grating constant. If we know number of lines on diffraction grating in certain distance or certain spacing, we can easily find out this grating constant or spacing between the two lines. So, here uh, we know that uh, condition uh, for dark or bright it depends on path difference between parallel uh, consecutive rays. So, to find out condition for bright and dark we should first find out what is the path difference between the parallel diffracted rays. So, consider this ray first ray and the second diffracted ray. These are the two parallel diffracted rays from the adjacent slits. Now, to find out path difference between these two parallel rays, we will first draw a normal A m on this second ray. Now, the path difference between this ray 1 and ray 2 it is equal to A dash m. So, path difference between this uh, ray 1 and ray 2 is given by A dash m. Now, this forms when we draw normal this forms a triangle which is a right angle triangle. So, consider this right angle triangle A m A dash. In this triangle angle A is also equal to theta because this is theta this is 90 minus theta. So, this angle is again theta. So, angle A is theta this is a right angle triangle we can take sin theta is equal to a dash m upon hypotenuse that is a a dash. So, a dash m is equal to a a dash into sin theta. Now, what is a a dash? a a dash is equal to a plus b. So, a a dash is equal to a plus b sin theta. So, this is our path difference. Path difference between the parallel diffracted rays from the adjacent slits. So, this when this path difference is equal to n lambda we get condition for bright. So, equation for bright for diffraction grating is a plus b sin theta where a plus b is grating element theta angle of diffraction n order of diffraction which is given as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Of course, 0 will give you central maximum, 1 will give you first order principal maximum. 2 will give you second order principal maximum and so on and lambda it is a wavelength of incident light. 
So, this is equation for bright for a diffraction grating. Now, as I told you, if we know number of lines in a given uh, distance or given spacing, we can find out A plus B. So, suppose N prime would uh, be the number of lines per centimeter, then A plus B is equal to 1 upon N prime. Now, we can replace this A plus B by 1 upon N prime in previous equation and our equation now becomes uh, this equation A plus B sin theta is equal to N lambda. This equation becomes for this we have to put this. So, 1 upon n prime into sin theta is equal to n lambda taking this n prime on other side we get our equation as sin theta equal to small n n prime into lambda. So, this is the same equation for uh, bright. Now, equation for secondary uh, minimum or um, uh, dark is given by capital N into a plus b sin theta is equal to m lambda. Now, capital N as I told you these are total number of lines, N prime number of lines per centimeter, capital N total number of lines A plus B sin theta is equal to M lambda where M is again order of diffraction and uh, it can have values 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So, it can take all the integer values except 0, N, 2, N, 3, N and so on. So, when we take this is equal to 0 we get central maximum. If it is equal to capital N, we get first order principal maximum. So, M cannot be equal to N. If we take it is equal to capital N or integer multiple of capital N, then uh, we will not get uh, equation for dark, but we will get equation for uh, bright. So, M cannot be equal to this, right? And this is our equation for secondary minimum. So, here uh, if, if we draw the diffraction pattern, there will be n minus secondary minima in between two principal maxima and n minus two secondary maxima between two principal maxima. Uh, so, here is the reflection spot for you again which type of diffraction grating will be obtained if white light is incident on diffraction grating. So, in our previous case you have seen that when light is incident on it we get central maximum first order second order. Uh, third order and so on that means alternate bright and dark fringes. Uh, but here if we incident a white light on this diffraction grating, so this is spectrometer instrument, we, use, we require spectrometer to see the diffraction pattern through this diffraction grating. So, when white light is incident on this diffraction grating, what will happen? Do we get alternate white and dark fringes or we will get the colored spectral lines? You can pause the video think for a while and uh, you can uh, write your answer. So, um, I hope you have got your answer now instead of alternate white and dark fringes we will get the colored spectral lines. So, option B is correct. Why it is so? Because if we see our equation A plus B sin theta is equal to N lambda, uh, A plus B is constant, grating constant is there and it is order of diffraction for certain order this N is constant lambda is variable for this because white light is incident. So, lambda and theta these are only the variables and they are directly proportional with each other. That means, as the wavelength of incident light increases, angle of diffraction will increase and white light constitutes VIBG by our colors and wavelength increases from violet to red. So, violet colored rays they get diffracted by the least angle of diffraction then indigo, then blue, then green, yellow, orange and red and hence we get this separate colored spectral lines. So, uh, this diffraction grating can be used to separate the colors. So, this is the diffraction pattern of white light that can be obtained. Central maximum is of course white light because this central maximum is obtained due to undiffracted rays. So, uh, here separation does not take place. So, central maximum is white and you can see this first order diffraction which is colored spectral lines, second order, third order. So, we get colored spectral lines. So, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you have understood this theory of diffraction.